In Christian circles, everybody's talking about the rapture of the church. And here to continue that discussion, and a great discussion it is, Dr. Larry Allison, and wel welcome back to Prophecy Watch. It's good to be here again. Listen, I, I love uh, this uh, video and audio series that you've done called Rapture and Beyond. And uh, Larry's also written a book called The Paradise of God, and he, uh, he talks about the rapture in various contexts. But today, Larry, what I want to do is just uh, sort of have a let, let your hair down conversation about the pre-trib rapture of the church and how it makes so much sense in the context of the entire Bible. Uh, and I, I don't even have to tell you where to start because I know that you preach and teach the pre-trib rapture of the church all the time. Well, let's start at the beginning. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He was talking with his friends and he was getting ready to leave planet mm -hmm. earth. He, uh, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is in John 14. Yep. And he starts describing a place in heaven. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. And then he goes on to say that he's going to come back. He said, I, I'm not going to prepare a place for you and not come back and get you. And he says he's going to come back. So he left and 2,000 years has gone by and he's getting ready to come back. Ooh. And he's coming back for those very clearly who have received him as their Lord and Savior. Who have since his ascension, who have died, and those of us who are still alive. Now everything that needs to happen before he returns has happened. Hmm. Now I've heard people say, that, well, this needs to happen and this needs to happen, but I personally I believe that uh, that's a little bit of incorrect interpretation of what Jesus said. Uh, first of all, we know that uh, he's coming back through prophecy after two days, 2,000 years, mm -hmm. and it's been two days, it's been 2,000 years since he left. But there are those who say, well, the gospel's got to be preached into all the world. And there are people who say this must happen or that must happen because Jesus said so when he was talking with mm -hmm. his disciples in Matthew 24. But what we need to understand is when Jesus was talking to his disciples it was a rabbi talking to his Jewish followers and those who he was, whom he was teaching and the church did not exist yet. Hmm. They didn't have the revelation of the church. Paul hadn't written his epistles. Jesus hadn't died on the cross. The church did not exist. In fact, he was answering a question that was generally being put to him this way. They were saying, now you say you're going to set up your kingdom as the Messiah. When are you going to set up your kingdom? When will the end come? And that is going to take place when Jesus comes back and touches down at the Mount of Olives and He's going to set up His kingdom and rule and reign here on this earth for a thousand years. But that is not the rapture. The rapture is seven years before that and there's nothing that needs to take place before the rapture. Yes, all of these things will take place before the end. They will take place before the second coming, but not necessarily before the rapture. Now Paul reveal this in his letter to the Thessalonians, he, he said, for the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be a glorious day. And it's going to be a day that we as Christians should be looking toward and anxiously, uh, I hate to use the word anxiously, but, but we should be eagerly anticipating that beautiful you know, day. All the Christians I know who are waiting for this event are eager. I've, I've got to tell you. I mean there is sometimes an eagerness that overwhelms you. It, it, he, oh he didn't come. I thought he was going to come last year but he didn't come. Now I've got to regroup and get ready to wait all over again. And, and I run into people like that. 
Well, it's, it's so refreshing to know that at any moment yeah. you'll never have to make that house payment again. <laughs> at, at, at any moment you'll never have to live in a body that's hurting right. or needs healing again. At any moment we could hear, in fact, Gary, the next sound we hear could be the trumpet of God and see Him descending in the clouds with a shout and the voice of the archangel. You know, I want to pick up on something you said a minute ago because uh-huh. I, I have my Bible open here to 1 Thessalonians four sixteen, and it says, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The Himself, the reflexive pronoun, mm-hmm. emphasizing it. It doesn't just say the Lord uh, shall descend, it says the Lord Himself, like in person. Uh, meaning that's an important thing to, to note. It's, he doesn't uh, delegate this uh, task to somebody else. No, the, when, he, when he left uh, he was talking with his disciples and it's recorded in Acts 1-8 where he, he tells them, he said, uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. And as he's talking his, his feet are leaving the ground and it says while he was talking he ascended up into the clouds. And there were two angels in white robes standing by and they said this same Jesus, the same Jesus that you saw leave in like manner he's coming back. We know that when he returns he's going to be taking us to the glorious place that he promised us he would be taking us to. And there there will be fullness of joy. You know the Bible says in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. You know, let's. I'm thinking as you're talking, and uh, let's go back to Jesus' ascension, because he didn't whip up into the sky at 500 miles an hour. App- apparently, he ascended in rather leisurely fashion, and they watched him go. Uh, do you suppose that that'll happen with us? Well, I, I think that there's a good possibility that when the resurrection takes place of the dead bodies, those who are dead in Christ, that it may not be a, an instantaneous thing. That it, it may be something that will unfold, it will take a while, the graves slowly open, or the bodies gradually forming and being caught up into the air. Otherwise why would we be told the dead in Christ will rise first? Now that's referring to their bodies. Because keep in mind the spirits of those who have died and gone on are already with the Lord. So the dead bodies come out of the ground, then we who are alive will be caught up with them at a later time. And I've had people say to me, but doesn't the Bible say in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye? Ooh. But see that scripture if you'll, if you'll look at it in context it's talking about how quick we are changed, not how quick we are caught up. Yes, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye mortality will drop off and we'll take on immortality. Corruption will drop off. We'll take on incorruption and we'll become as He is. And that'll happen in an instant. Hmm. But the resurrection itself may not be quite so instantaneously. Now I don't want to throw you off or anything Mm -hmm. but a question just popped into my head Uh, and it is uh, about the quote unquote secret rapture. A lot of people uh, tend to, to put those two words together and they talk about a secret rapture in which uh, the church is, like, is gone and nobody can figure it out. Uh, or maybe they don't even notice that it's gone. It's kind of a secret event. Other people say no, the world will know about this thing and wonder about it. What do you think? Well the Scripture doesn't say that the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a quiet voice. That's true. No, He's He's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, hmm. the trumpet of God. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a magnificent worldwide event. And the graves opening and bodies coming out of the graves, dead bodies coming out of the graves being ascended into the sky. And once they're in the sky they are converted into resurrected glorified bodies. And then we who are alive being caught up in the same way that Jesus ascended? How was it that He ascended? He slowly, while He was talking, was caught up into the clouds. So if this happens it's going to be pretty hard to keep that a secret. Hmm. With all the news media we have, with all of the 
the phone cameras we have, you can't do anything in this day and age without there being pictures of it on the internet within moments. This is going to be a worldwide well-known event. It will be no secret. It's, uh, it's going to shake the world to its very foundations. I, again, I'm in, in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4 and the next chapter, uh, chapter 5, uh, says, but in the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Uh, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. And so that then begins to discuss the context. Well, it's, it's coming as a thief in the night to those who are in darkness. But if you'll read on the next couple of verses it says, but you are not of the darkness. Hmm that this day should come upon you like a thief. So there will be a sense within the body of Christ, I believe. It's my personal opinion. There will be a sense of we may not know the day or the hour, but we will know the season of His coming. Hmm. Because it says very clearly, yes, this day will come like a thief in the night, but you are not in darkness and you are not of the night that this day should come upon you that way. So there should be some sort of a sensing, and, and I'm sensing it within myself. Hmm. And I'm meeting believers on a regular basis who are sensing that there has been a shift somewhere. There's, there's been a dimensional change and the awareness that Jesus is coming back is, is growing and becoming strong within the body of Christ. I honestly believe we are at a point where it could be any day. And something else that I'd like to introduce into this conversation is the rate or the increasing rate at which the world is dissolving into absolute anarchy. Uh, I, I'm sure you've noticed it. Yes. The street marches, the craziness, the, the weird politics, the financial shenanigans, the, the political hijinks all over the world, dictators rising. I mean, uh, that alone should tell you that we're getting close to something. We are definitely in the end times. Of course Daniel prophesied this. He said in the last days people would be moving to and fro at a rapid rate of speed, uh, that knowledge would increase. I read the other day that if all of the data that has been collected by the Hubble telescope were put into one place it would take all the scientists that are working on this data 20 years to catch up with the data that they've already downloaded. That is a phenomenal amount of knowledge. Knowledge faster than, than the mind can even comprehend it. And now we're coming out with artificial intelligence mm. to help us comprehend it. Uh, for 6,000 years from the time that Adam was kicked out of the garden until this generation, the fastest mode of transportation was the fastest animal that you could find. Right. If you were in one country maybe it was an elephant, in another country it may have been a horse or, or whatever. But whatever animal you could find that you could ride that was the fastest one, that was your fastest transportation. My grandmother told me, she said when she was 13 she saw her first automobile. Well up until that time all transportation for her had been with horse and buggy. But within one generation she went from seeing something that would take her faster than a horse to watching men land on the moon having traveled tens of thousands of miles per hour to get hmm. there. So travel has changed. I know you're a pilot, I'm a pilot. Uh, things are different than they were a hundred years oh, ago. Oh they are. And so prophecy has been fulfilled. Everything that needed to take place in the end times other than the things that need to take place during the tribulation have taken place. But we're not going to be here for the tribulation. We are not. And you know people have talked about the tribulation for years, the mark of the beast and what in the world is it? Uh, is it something that's injected under the skin or, or you know, and you've heard all the arguments. I've heard them all. And then suddenly like in the last three or four years everybody's talking about AI, artificial intelligence and how frightened mm -hmm. they are that some massive <clears throat> computer network could control all of humanity. The first thought in my mind is the Antichrist. He, he, would, he would love AI. Well, one of the uh, promoters, I won't mention his name on the air, but one of the promoters and inventors of AI uh, in an interview not too long ago asked what the greatest threat to mankind was. 
And he said artificial intelligence. Because artificial intelligence can start creating its own intellect and increasing its own brain power. So this is something that uh, we are facing now that no other generation has ever faced. It's something that in the hands of the Antichrist after the church is taken away could be a tool that where he could attempt to rule the world. But we do know this, Jesus is coming back and whatever takes place during the tribulation it's not going to affect us. Now I'm going to turn a couple of pages forward in my Bible and just broaden the subject a little bit. Second Thessalonians uh, talks about uh, the rapture in very mm-hmm. plain clear terms. <clears throat> And it it talks uh, about the revelation of the man of sin. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away. First that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now uh, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, actually son of perdition is an interesting title. I understand that 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 title was was applied to Judas Iscariot mm-hmm. as well as to the Antichrist. Right. So maybe Judas was a model uh, of this guy. Uh, you look today and, and you see a lot of potential Antichrists. I don't know about you, but I see some pretty dark characters out there right now behind the scenes. Well the Scripture says even back in, during the time of the first century that the spirit of the Antichrist was with them even then. And so the ad- attitude of anti-Christ, anti-anointing, anti-Christian, uh, that spirit has been here on the earth since then. However, there will be a man revealed who will be what we call the Antichrist. It's interesting you know that the word Antichrist is not even mentioned in the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. So uh, we gather so much from these writings of Paul. You know, the, it's interesting, it says that he won't be revealed until uh, the falling away. And that word falling away in the original Greek, you know, could also mean, and I've heard it taught, the catching away. Absolutely. Well, who is it that's going to be caught away? Us. For the course. Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive. This, this is not a fictional story. This is not a metaphor for it's just going to be okay for us. No, we are, we're not going to be here for the tribulation. And a man came to me one time after a a service and he said, you're just teaching escapism. I said, you're right. Mm -hmm. We are not appointed to wrath. The church is not appointed to wrath. There will be wrath. It's going to be a bad time here on the earth during the seven years. Granted, it's going to be bad. But we're going to be in a glorious place. We're going to be in heaven itself where we're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb and the the judgment seat of Christ where He rewards the church. Now you used a term there, the church. And that's a term is a throwaway that that everybody uses. Let's go to church, the church did this, church did But church actually is a very specific meaning. Uh, The the called out Mm -hmm. body of Christ it's, it is only one thing. That is, it is a group, the very unique uh, and compact, if you will, group. And it, it acts as a unit uh, in Scripture. And it stays a unit. It's caught up in the rapture. The church, mm-hmm. this born again group of believers in Jesus Christ are going to be in heaven they're going to be ruling and reigning with Jesus for the thousand years. And for all eternity he refers to this group as the trophies of His grace. Hmm. We are the trophy of His grace. If ever there was a group that did not deserve Him, it would be us. Yes indeed. But He can, he can point to us throughout eternity and He can say, see this group? I saved them. They, they show how much grace I actually have. We, we are in the age of grace. The church is the trophy of His grace. And we are the ones with the resurrected glorified bodies. See now there will be people still on the earth after the rapture who will believe in Jesus. Absolutely. Who will, who will change their mind. There's going to be the 
the teaching of the 144,000 Jewish young men, 12,000 from each tribe. They're going to be preaching. We're going to have the two witnesses. The Antichrist is going to have his hands full. He has rebellion in the ranks. Everything's not going perfect for him. He, he's, he's having a tough time. And there are going to be those who will not take the mark of the beast. There will be those who will make it through the tribulation until the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. But they will not have glorified bodies. And they, they will not have been placed into this very unique group of believers. Which is why uh, living as we do today in the 21st century we are astonishingly blessed to be able to come before God through Christ and obtain salvation and become part of this group called the church, the called out body of Christ. The, the thought of the, 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 yeah. the ability to do that and to obtain grace is beyond one's wildest dreams. See I've had people say to me I kind of want to be a Christian, but here's the deal. If you're right, they'll look at me and they'll say, if you're right, here's the thing. When the rapture takes place and I see that the rapture has taken place, then I'll believe you. Then I will believe. The problem is that could be true except for the fact the door has closed on the ark. At that point in time, you can no longer be part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is taken away for the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. And yes, you may not be cast into Hades, but you're going to live for eternity as a believer in a regular body. And if you're martyred, you'll be serving in a regular resurrected body, but only the church is going to have resurrected glorified bodies which are bodies like our Lord and Savior. He's the head of the church, we are His body, we are a very unique group. And if ever there's been a call for evangelism, we should want to get our friends and our relatives and people that we know born again, saved, receiving Jesus before the rapture. Right. Yes there's always that possibility they could be saved from destruction later, but we want them to be a part of the church, the body of Christ. You're listening to uh, Dr. Larry Ollison, and uh, he's developed some remarkable teaching aids. I've seen a lot of his DVDs. Uh, I've heard him uh, on CD. Uh, I have here a, a, a CD DVD package called uh, The Rapture and Beyond. And he goes much, much farther in, in this package than, than we have time to do today. And I got to tell you, he's a natural teacher. Uh, you're sort of drawn to him as he speaks. Uh, and if you have a friend that you want to expose uh, to the idea of the pre-trib rapture, this, you couldn't do better than rapture and beyond. Also, uh, Larry has written The Paradise of God. And uh, what can I say? It's all about everything from the fall to eternity, from the fall of Lucifer uh, uh, through the new heavens and the new earth in a very compact form. Uh, how do you fit into this whole picture? And then uh, this is the best, your best days are yet to come. Uh, describe this series uh, in briefly if you will. It's a 10 DVD set where we took a classroom study for Life Christian University mm -hmm. and so we have 10 one hour sessions and we, we start out at the very beginning at creation and we, we move all the way through history to eternity and we take it slowly step by step so that a believer can know exactly where they're going to be at any point in time in history. And we're calling The Paradise of God, Your Best Days Are Yet to Come and Rapture and Beyond, The Pathway to Paradise Package for your gift of $75. It's in the online bookstore, prophecywatchers.com. Click on the online bookstore and scroll down to Larry Ollison's name. Your gift of $75, free shipping anywhere in the USA, and you will have some remarkable uh, encouragement and some remarkable teaching aids, I must say. Call the 800 number on your screen. By the way, Larry is going to be speaking at our conference, October 12th through 14th, uh, and it's the second annual uh, Prophecy Forum, and I'm really glad you're going to be there. It's going to be an honor to be there and I'm looking forward to it. 
Hi, Gary Stearman with a very special announcement from Prophecy Watchers. Bob Ulrich, we've got a lot to talk about. We do. It's an exciting time to be alive as the prophecies of the Bible come to pass right before our eyes. Have a big conference coming up October 12th through 14th. We're going to be celebrating the 70th anniversary of Israel at the second annual Blessed Hope Prophecy Forum at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Norman, Oklahoma. October 12th through 14th. You can register for the event at prophecywatchers.com or call us toll free at the phone number on your screen. And Bob, we have the top speakers in the world of Bible prophecy. A conference not clo- like no other. 32 speakers. L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, Jan Markell, David Reagan, Mark Hitchcock, Terry James, the names just go on and on. 32 speakers in one event. Not much time. You need to register now. Gary Stearman for Prophecy Watchers saying, see you there. Well, how do we conclude today? Uh, to wrap this whole thing up about the rapture, or as you, as you have put it in your DVD, CD set, Rapture and Beyond. I like that. Uh, I'm, I'm th- I love the beyond. I, well, Christians have always wanted to know, and it seems to be a most asked question at funerals and is what happens to a person when their body quits working? And it's much like an astronaut. When you're in outer space and your spacesuit quits working, you can't stay in outer space. When you're on Earth and your Earth suit quits working, you can't stay on Earth. Your spirit must go someplace. First Thessalonians 5.23 says we are spirit, soul, and body. So when the body quits working, according to Paul, absent from the body, present with the Lord, but where from there? What will we be doing? Can we talk? Can we speak? Can we see? Do we have feeling? Do we have regret? Do we have emotions? All of these questions are answered in the Bible very clearly. And the Bible tells exactly where you will be from the moment your body dies until the moment in the far reaches of eternity clearly in the Word of God. And that's what we share in these teachings. You know there's an old hymn, Blessed Assurance. I'm sure you've sung it many times. Jesus is mine. Yeah, and, and well, <laughs> I couldn't help thinking of that as you were talking. What, what an amazingly blessed assurance we have. Well if you know where you're going there's no fear of getting there. How, how true. Larry Allison, uh, and keep writing and, and, and keep uh, uh, sending us uh, good stuff your way, uh, our way. And listen, a good teacher is a rare commodity. Uh, I've heard a lot of people teach Scripture. Uh, I've heard Larry teach, and he's a gifted teacher. Uh, he, he's a cut above, shall we say. And, and he'll sort of pull you up to his level. And that, that's sort of the best thing I can think of to say right now, and it's true. Well, thank you. Larry Allison, at, join us, by the way, at uh, our second annual Prophecy Forum. And, and you can uh, introduce uh, yourself to Larry and, and say, Larry, I've listened to your, uh, your DVD, and it's phenomenal. <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Yes. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you keep watching. We are... Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com.